Hey guys, and welcome to Money Talks News, the podcast. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today we're going to play a little game called Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? That is me. <laughs> now, yeah, I can raise my hand. It's not for like that. the one you see on TV in this respect. This game involves me, an actual millionaire, giving guidance and advice to two people who aren't millionaires but want to be. You ready to start playing? Let's play. Oh, yeah. First, let's meet our contestants. Kim Wynn is our first guy. Now, Kim, where are you from? Tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, I, I live here in Lakeland, Florida, Central Florida. Uh, I am uh, 37 years old, and I want to be a millionaire. So I don't have to work again. <laughs> that's probably the easiest thing. I think answer. that's why lots of people want to be millionaires. H- yeah. How about you, Jillian Manning, our, yeah. our other contestant? Tell us a little bit about yourself. That's right. Um, I am 24. I bounced around a lot when I grew up, but I spent a lot of time in Florida, Central, South, whatever you name it. But today I am living in Philadelphia. So Cool. And um, I would like to be a millionaire, I guess, for the... The peace of mind and security that comes with that. Um, I'm assuming you can let me know, but, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> moving out of the apartment, having a home, retiring, all that good stuff. Well, you know, I was just t- talking to our producer, Aaron Freeman, before we started the show. And uh, I said, there's only one class of people who don't want to be millionaires. And that is people who are billionaires. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and start our show. Now, wh- how the show is going to work is I'm going to give you guys some questions uh, ask you about your life and tell you whether you're on the path to becoming a millionaire. I'm, wor- I'm worth a little north of $10 million. Uh, I'm 69 years old, though, too, and that's, that's key to the- becoming a millionaire. But anyway, now one, we'll start by, with this. It would seem that there are lots of different ways to become a millionaire. I mean, infinite, right? But guess what? There aren't. There are six. That's all. Hmm. You know what they are? Do you, do you know what any of them are, Kim or, or Jillian? I, I want to guess Mary Rich. Mary Rich <laughs> yeah, is definitely I'll put one. That on my list. Um, I would say stocks and real estate are definitely up there. Yeah. Uh, let me run it down for you. You can either marry rich, you can inherit, you can exploit a unique talent, like an artist or an athlete or an actor, you know, something like that. You can either get really lucky, win the lottery, um, you can run a successful business or own a successful business, or you can spend less than you make and you can invest over long periods of time. Those are literally the only ways that you can become a millionaire. I mean, maybe if somebody wants to, to uh, cry foul on that, go ahead. But I believe those are the only ways you can do it. So how do you feel about, you know, spending money on the lottery, especially like when it hits that like 500 million? The lottery like is a tax on poor people. OK. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's well, if it makes you happy. You know, if it gives you $2 worth of happiness to buy a lottery ticket, buy it. You know, but I mean, it's a dumbass thing to do in terms of odds. Uh, but, I, but I will say, I will say, when, you know, when that Mega Millions or whatever it is gets up to like $500 million, I, I will buy tickets and I'll buy like four or five of them, hand it out to my friends and then make them swear to God that they'll give me half the money if they win. You know, that, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. But generally speaking, obviously not a great idea. So let me ask you guys this question, though. Actually, Jillian, do you ever spend more than you make in a month? No, I definitely avoid that. And something that I find helpful as well is, I don't know how many banks have that, but I primarily bank with Chase. And if you go to a certain part of the app, it has like an in and out type scale, like how much are you putting out versus how much are you bringing in? And it's super helpful too, because, you know, it'll tell you which categories most of that spending is coming from as well. So it makes it easy to keep track and making sure the level of spending is definitely not matching, um, you know, how much I'm bringing in in a month. You are well on your way <laughs> to becoming a millionaire. <laughs> because obviously spending less than you make is, is integral. You know, I mean, you, now, let me, let me also hasten to add, there are going to be months when that doesn't happen. I mean, you know, I've, I've worked my ass off my whole life and I've made good money my whole life. But there are times when I had to spend more than I made in a month. I mean, you know, because it happens. Life happens. You know, so sometimes it doesn't work, but it should always be your goal. Now, next question is for you, Kim. Do you like to use debt? I am terrible with money. When I graduated college, I had $60,000 in debt. Holy so- cow. I know that, that that was a lot for me. And I was just like, 
how the heck did I get here? Um, so I spent probably the next six or seven years paying down, get, get to that zero. Um, and I'm, I'm very dead averse. <laughs> so, um, now it doesn't mean I don't take risks, but it's very calculated this time. You, you know, know, you're and the I, first person, Kim, that I've ever talked to who ran up a bunch of debt in college. Almost mm-hmm. nobody does that. <laughs> I mean, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a person who did right. that exact thing. I mean, yeah. every single they, – they're like, well, why did they accept the charge if they knew I couldn't pay it? Right. <laughs> I mean, or people would say, I didn't run out of checks. How come my checks started bouncing? I still had checks left. No, yeah. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to make fun of people, but, you know, we, we make mistakes and we get older and that's how we learn stuff. So, anyway, avoiding debt is really important. But there are two situations – where you're going to use debt. One is when you have no choice. Your back is up against the wall. You know, you're, you need to throw bail. You know, whatever. <laughs> but you have to, you have to. But can, can Jillian, can you give me another situation where debt might be okay? Uh, well, first of all, you do need to have some level of debt and credit to be able to apply for, you know, basic things. True if enough. I, if I didn't have... Any debt at some point in my life, I would not have gotten my first apartment and I wouldn't have been, I won't be able to get a house, you know, if up to then I never got any debt either. Um, I'm trying to think of like one specific way because usually when I'll do- Not a specific situation, a a type of situation. Let let me just fill it in. When when you're going to make more on what you're buying, then you're going to pay an interest. If you're paying 10% in interest, you're making 20% on what you're paying, I mean, what you're buying, you're, you're getting richer that way, right? Mm-hmm. But if you're paying 20% and making five or making none, you're getting poor. The bank's getting richer, you're getting poor. It's just that simple. People make, people make paying interest like this big mystery. Is there good debt? Is there bad debt? Well, you know, what, when you pay interest, what you're doing is taking your money and giving it to somebody else. When you earn interest, you're taking the bank's money and you're putting it in your pocket. It ain't complicated. So the only time you ever, and it may be in an education or buying a house, um, is, is a good time to have, you know, to use debt. Otherwise, or business maybe. Otherwise, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take you longer to become a millionaire if you, sp- if you pay interest. Simple enough, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. Now, and also, by the way, uh, having good credit is what helps you buy a house. Jillian, not having debt. Yeah, right? but uh, would you? Well, but would you, you have to build your stuff. credit like you yes, know yes, by yes, doing that, right? right? So, like for absolutely me, it would be right. you know this time I'll put some groceries on and I'll I'll pay that off you know later and and, and that sort of thing. Cool, that makes sense. Okay, now, would you rather look rich or would you rather be rich? What do you think, Kim? I think I know you'd rather be rich. (laughs) Yeah, of course. But you know, a lot of people spend their lives trying to look rich. Let me ask you a question, either one of you. Do you lease a car? No, I don't. Absolutely not. Good. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you said that because, and and obviously this is not universally true, but if you, oftentimes people lease a car because they can't afford to pay for it. So they're they're paying for a, a part of it by leasing. So that's an example of trying to look rich when you're actually not. You buy what you can afford, you know, and I don't look rich even now. I mean, I live in a house a third of the, uh, I mean, I could have a house three times more expensive than this. I drive, I've never bought a new car in my life. I have a nice car. I have a Mercedes convertible, but it's not new. Uh, So in other words, the point is I don't give a damn about looking rich, but I do give a damn about being rich. And so that's what's really important too. And it sounds like you guys feel the same way. For sure. The the other day, um, I was having dinner with my friend, and he just leased a a Porsche, an electric Porsche, uh, which is upwards of like seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, love him. Awesome guy. He's a doctor. It's great, but he's also in debt. So yeah, <laughs> uh, and his nephews were with him, and he and I told him about my car, which is you know a my dream car when I was a sixteen year old. I bought it for three thousand dollars cash. And when the nephews came out to see uh, my car, which I told them, you know, like, I've been working on it. You know, it's got lights. It looks like it's from Fast and the Furious, essentially. They were just more amazed by my car than the $60,000 car with all the, the, the gadgets and gizmos. So I, I totally agree. 
Yeah, and and we all we all want to look successful. And, and I don't want yeah. to come across like a miser or something, you know, pinching pennies. I spend <laughs> money. And like I said, I drive a Mercedes convertible, you know, but I, I just don't waste money and I don't really care. And, and you know, I'm also old. And, and yeah. I, I remember, I was going to say I remember being 30, but truth is, I don't. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, I can understand look. wanting to look good, you know, and all that sort of thing. And, and having people, I want people to walk into my house and go, God, nice house, you know, yeah. a nice car. You know, I want, you know, we all want that. Uh, feeds our egos but well, just be, just be aware that if you, it's not easy to live long enough to both look rich when you're young and be rich when you're older because that's where your money's going okay let's uh, another question how about how about investing guys do, do you guys do you guys invest jillian do you invest in the stock market I have stocks in one company uh yeah so i in just one <laughs> mm-hmm. and so what uh, you know, you're making me ask you what company. I mean, <laughs> what, I mean I'm not going to ask you that. I, I mean, I have no choice. I jumped on the NVIDIA train. So that's oh. that's my investment in the stock market. <laughs> well, you picked the right one. We're all going to be using about AI any other for the rest of our lives. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've been investing in stocks for 40 years, Jillian. I, and um, I put ten thousand dollars into Nvidia during the um, pandemic, hey. and as we speak, it's worth two hundred eighty thousand dollars. So even the blind squirrel finds the occasional acorn. <laughs> uh, so that, I mean, congratulations on making that. But the point I'm making here, though, is the riskiest thing you can do is not to take any risk. Now, I'm not going to say that buying one stock, you certainly won this time. But, you know, maybe not one stock, having several stocks is a good idea. But if you don't take any risk at all, I mean, the difference between making 2% in the bank and making 1,000%, you know, on that stock or being realistic, 10% a year in the stock market is monster, especially over long periods of time. I mean, I've made a couple of million dollars in the stock market over long periods of time. And video is an exception. But I also bought Apple for a dollar. And it and it's now um, twenty or two hundred thirty dollars a share, I think. And mm -hmm. so I've got a quarter million dollars in that. And I put in fifteen hundred dollars. Again, first of all, let me let me say really quickly too. I've made plenty of mistakes. I'm not suggesting I'm the best investor who ever lived, but getting out there with some money, especially money you can leave for long periods of time, can be the difference between getting rich and just getting by. And and that's just a fact. We're almost out of time. Um, as a matter of fact, we kind of are out of time. Um, are there any are there any thoughts you guys have on this before we close out this podcast? I think your last point is something that I see with uh, a lot of my peers, a lot of my friends at my age. You know, they're they're in the last few years they were either trying to hold on mon onto money to buy a house, for instance, and with the way the housing market has kind of flipped, they're not sure what to do with their money. You know, and so part of what I've, I've I've suggested is to do the research. You know, part of if you don't do anything at all, it's making that one or point zero two percent sitting in well uh, like a Wells Fargo account versus like you know those four or five percent high in, uh, you know high yield interest yeah. uh, account. So it, it is part of that. I think that to me is one of the biggest things I've learned uh, in terms of my personal financial. Awesome. Journey. And you know, one thing I'm, I'll close with this too. Uh, I, I was a stockbroker for years. And in fact, I managed a, 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 a group of stockbrokers. Anyway, people would always say, "Not you know, when something goes south, they would go, oh, that stockbroker, what a dick. You know, he didn't, you know, he ripped me off, blah, 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 blah. So the last thing I would say is never make your well-being somebody else's responsibility. If you're going to do something, understand it. If you're going to be in the stock market, read about it. Watch TV. The reason I made money in stocks is because I paid attention to it. I, I spend two hours a day now uh, looking at stock stuff, and I've been doing it for 40 years. If you don't have that level of interest, stay on the sidelines. Because the only person you've got to blame if something goes south is you. Whatever you're in, know what it is. Understand what it is. Follow people who know what it is around until they get a restraining order on you. Which I mean, talk to people, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, keep your money in the bank. Because you're going to end up blaming somebody else for something that's your fault. So that, that's my last little bit of advice. And you know what, you guys, I have to say, I think you're both going to become millionaires. I really do. Unfortunately, I'll probably be dead. <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for playing our game. <laughs> and I want to see, oh, and, and everybody out there who's watching, I want you guys to please, please, please follow our podcast, follow, join our YouTube channel, tell your friends, tell them I'll give them some money if they sign up. It's not true, but tell them that. <laughs> Whatever you need to do. And folks, we're going to see you right here next time. <laughs>